You may be seated. We're glad that all of you are here. My cousin, Brother Donald Bird, we're so glad that he's here. A lot going on there. Pray for him. Pray for his family. God, give him wisdom, strength for the journey. Amen. We're glad he's here. It's good to see my uncle and aunt, Baron Jeanette. No strangers to us. We're glad they're here today. God bless the Harris family. Brother Ray, your friends are here. I met them. We're so glad y'all here. Thank you for coming today. We're loving worshiping with you today. We're loving this. Amen. Several years ago, um, several sounds better than a long time ago. Um, we met brother and sister Wright, Rick and Elizabeth Wright, and have become great friends, good friends throughout the years. Uh, we've hunted together, fished together. We've had more church together than anything. And it was with Brother Wright and the Mississippi District that I committed my greatest verbal faux pas. I will, some of you were there when I explained it. I won't tell you what it was because you kicked me out of here. But it was the worst thing I have ever said publicly. And we're going to leave it just like that. Um, thank God for grace that covers stupidity. But we're glad Brother Wright is here. Elizabeth, we're glad you're here. And we love this family. But I want him to come greet you, leave a word with you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Would you lift up those apostolic voices right now and give our great God great praise. Oh, come on and lift up those voices as loud as you can and magnify the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to shake the atmosphere right now. This is what the kingdom sounds like. My God, what an amazing thing God is doing here. Look at this place. Brother and Sister Morgan, I love you. I honor you. It's so good to see you. So you are so important to the kingdom of God. You are so valuable. To this day, he is the only member of the Morgan clan to ever point a gun at me. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. Uh, I better probably better explain that. Your pastor bought a truck off of me in Mississippi, sent his mother and father to come down and pick it up. So I'm in my office finishing some paperwork, and all of a sudden he just pulls out a revolver. Look at this. For about two or three seconds, I thought, this thing has really gone south. But he just wanted to show me the new gun he bought. Thank God. I love and honor your pastor. You are a queen and an angel. We love you guys so much. You are friends. What? The last time we were here was your installation service. Oh my God, man. Seven years. I'm going to share some. I'm supposed to just say hi, but I'm going to share something with you. I shared with your son, and he confirmed for me last night about two o'clock, two thirty in the morning. I'm waking up. I'm praying, and God said, seven years. You spoke this just a moment ago. This church is moving into a place of maturity now, and because of that, the fivefold ministry is not going to be something that comes in and visits. It's going to be resident in this place. Because this, as a mature church, has to have the fivefold ministry to do what he's gone in this church to do. This is not a city church. This is a regional apostolic authority. And here's what God showed me. Because you stepped through an open door in India and said, I'll be the man that, now that there's a space here. God said, I'm going to honor that. I'm going to raise you up as an apostolic authority, not just in that nation, but here as well. The same door that has been opened there for harvest, he is going to open here because you have stepped into that role. You have walked in authority, Brother Morgan, but now you're going to stand in a place of dominion. There is an unprecedented harvest in this region. I see thousands and thousands full of the Holy Ghost. It's going to happen. If you believe that, would you shout right now and give our God praise? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. By the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, it's going to happen. I love you guys. I, your sons, your daughters. God is just, he must really love, he must love you. You, he's working on you still, thank God. 
I've got that video, by the way. So, for the right price. Love you guys. Thank you so much for welcoming us. God bless you in Jesus' name. There's some things that just need to stay under the blood. That's where you put them. Let's stand one more time. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for obeying the spirit. And uh, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness in our absence. Church looked absolutely just like it looked today. And that is what Brother Wright referenced. There is a true spiritual maturity that is coming to this body. And I'm so thankful for it. You are to be commended for it. You are to be so good things, good things, great things. You cannot sow into the kingdom and not reap from the kingdom. Don't, don't let the, don't let the doubters get to you. Don't, don't let the naysayers. It, it, nothing. There wasn't a physical enemy alive. There wasn't a king or a kingdom or an army big enough to stop Israel from Egypt to Canaan. Nation after nation, they annihilated. The five nations that were left there while they inhabited Jerusalem, they eventually annihilated them. There was no king or kingdom, no nation or army big enough to stop Israel. You know what stopped Israel? Paul said their unbelief. That's it. So when you hear things like, thousands and you say well at that moment you are never in a more dangerous precarious moment because you have a choice to believe or not to believe somebody was preaching the other day and they said it was a great sermon they got a little out of context they said Moses got in trouble because he did something the reason why Moses got in trouble is he smote the rock the second time. That's the only reason Moses didn't go into Canaan land. Joshua and Caleb did. They come out of Egypt. But Moses, he messed up the typology of Jesus Christ because Paul wrote and said that there's only one lamb and it's only slain one time. And when Moses smote that rock, that was typology of the smiting of Jesus and that's it. And when Moses did it the second time, it messed it up. He said, you, you, you're not going to teach false doctrine in my church. So you have to get doctrine correct or you'll never see the promises. Why do you spend so much time on things? Because we want the promises. We want everything God's got. I want you so blessed. Go ahead. I want you so blessed that you're the lender, not the borrower. I want you so blessed you're the head, not the tail. I want you so blessed. Come on, I'm not just talking spiritually. I want your finances blessed. I want your marriages blessed. I want your mental health blessed. I want you blessed. If thou wilt hearken diligently and do all whatsoever I have commanded thee this day, then I will command these blessings to come upon you. And the next 11 verses is the promises and the fruition of God. If you hearken diligently and do all, you can't pick and choose. We're either all in or we're all out. That's how you live for God. And I think that we are getting there. Are we perfect? No. But we're forgiven. The world has made that a cheap phrase, but I thank God for forgiveness. I thank God for the blood. Thank God we live in the day of the slain lamb. Thank God. Brother Wade told me a while ago, life is funny, comes full circle, that he preached his first revival in Mountain Home, Arkansas. Been evangelizing since the 90s. I didn't know that until about 10 minutes ago. Life is really funny because I started in Arkansas as a licensed minister in Blue Eye in Section 7. And I have come full circle. And I wouldn't trade Mountain Home for any place, anywhere. There ain't a church out there I trade you for.
because ain't nobody else to put up with me. So like my wife, I told her, I said, you just stuck, honey. I love you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Wednesday night service, 6.30 prayer, 7 o'clock service. I'm looking forward to spreading the word of God, sharing the word of God, hearing the word of God. Thank God you're here today. Brother Wade, we're glad you're here. We know nothing's coincidental. And this, this is a guy that does not need places to preach. Just so you know. Um, he's not sitting around waiting in his hotel room or travel trailer or his house saying, boy, I hope somebody calls me this weekend. Just read into that what you want to. Um, the Lord opened this door for this weekend. And when we talked, I said, my prayer has been to get you here for this weekend and see if you and God and this church clicks. Is that not what I said? I said, and then we'll let God dictate the future with you in this church. I believe God is going to send an evangelist to this body this year. And we're going to see a revival of a hundred people. This year. Well, I got it. I'm glad you're here. because Boy, I want to preach bad. I love you, Brother Wade. It's all yours. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, and let's give the Lord all the praise we can here this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It's one minute till noon, and somebody ought to give the Lord some praise in this house. Come on and give the Lord some praise. If somebody wants a miracle, you ought to give the Lord some praise in this house. Well, that's pretty good, but somebody ought to give the Lord some praise. I said, give the Lord some praise. Oh, come on and give the Lord some praise. I feel the Holy Ghost in here now. I feel the gift of faith stirring in this building right now. Praise the Lord, and what a great honor it is to be in the house of the Lord. I am, now I'm not a sermonizer, so y'all can sit down, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. I hope you don't mind. Because I didn't drive nine hours one way to play church. Oh, hallelujah. I said, I didn't drive nine hours one way to play church. And the miracles of God are in this service right now. Not later, but they're here right now. Hallelujah. See, you've got to learn the difference between praise and worship. Worship is where intimacy is. And I'm thankful for intimacy with God. But what I understand is, is that, um, uh, what I understand is, is that most of what people call worship is nothing more than feeling sorry for themselves. Hallelujah. I give honor to your man of God today. Now, please forgive me. Uh, he's a legend and I, I'm just honored to be here and. I tried to sneak into the office and sneak all the notes that I could, but somebody walked in on me and there it was. And I got caught red handed. So I didn't get much praise the Lord. But what I did get, I probably am aware that I'm going to be able to go a few years on praise the Lord. And I'm thankful to the Lord for that. And uh, I give him honor in all seriousness. I give the man of God honor here today. And uh, you are you glad about your man of God? Praise the Lord. <sighs> oh, God, help me. Hallelujah. And I give honor to uh, our good friend, uh, Brother Wright. And I, I, I affectionately call her Queen Elizabeth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, she has to put up with Brother Wright. But pray for her that the Lord will lighten her load some. Hallelujah. 
And uh, what a great man of God. And I thankful for all the ministry here. Praise God. Most of what we call worship is nothing more than feeling sorry for ourselves. And because when real worship goes forth, there's something supposed to be released. And the thing that's released in worship is the gifts of healing. Hallelujah. That's not the working of miracles. It's the gifts of healing. And that in just a moment, the gifts of healing are going to come through this building. And those of you that have been struggling in your joy is getting ready to have a reversal here in just a moment. Woo! Oh, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. In just a moment, the, there is going to be a release of joy in this house. And I'm telling you, some of you that have been battling in your walk with God with joy for years and years and years is getting ready to have a reversal of that. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so what has to happen is the gifts of healing are released through worship. And uh, they are released through worship because gifts of healing, the gifts of healing are the only spiritual gift in scripture that is plural. Hallelujah. Because it deals with the emotions. Praise God. And it deals with the mind and the soul. And it deals with the emotions of the people. Hallelujah. But praise is different altogether. Praise is where militant power comes. And when you release praise, it releases the working of miracles. Hallelujah. That's why you will not get a miracle crying. When you want a miracle from God, you've got to open your mouth and you've got to give the Lord a shout of praise in here. Hallelujah. So if I was you and I needed a miracle, I would be giving God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you here today, God's about to break some walls down in this house. There's some walls about to come down up in here. Ah, and it ain't coming down without a shout. It ain't coming down without a shout. Some of you don't need to be crying. You need to be shouting right now. It's not coming down without a shout. Oh, oh, oh yes. It's not coming down without a shout. I've been crying long enough. I've been crying long enough. I've been crying long enough. I've lamented long enough. I've laid in the sackcloth and ashes too long. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 I'm letting hell know I have cried long enough. I have cried long enough. I have lamented long enough. I have sat down and wept by the willow long enough. And now that I, I see, I'm not staying stuck in the wilderness of weeping. Hallelujah. Woo. I said, I'm not staying stuck in the wilderness of weeping. I have been weeping too long. I have been stuck in the wilderness of weeping too long. That's the problem with the apostolic church at large. They have learned how to cry and feel sorry for themselves. They have learned how to take on things that never belong to them. I better not because I've got to get up out of here. I, I don't want to be here all day, but I come here to obey the Holy Ghost. See, some of y'all haven't had joy in a long time because you have been deceived in believing that joy is just an emotion. Well, praise the Lord. 
You have been deceived in believing. We have been deceived in believing that joy is just an emotion. And when the emotion doesn't come, then we don't have joy. But that devil is a liar. I'm going to tell y'all here today, joy, you've got to know where joy comes from. Uh, joy. Uh, you, you, some of you are never going to be robbed of joy ever again. Uh, and you've got to know where joy comes from. Uh, joy doesn't come from the number in a bank account. Uh, joy doesn't come from what I drove up in the parking lot. Uh, joy doesn't come. Oh, God help me. Well, hallelujah. You got to know where joy comes from. You see, my brother, the reason why people don't know joy is not an emotion. Joy is a fruit that I bear. Now listen to me very closely. Joy is a fruit that I bear. According to Galatians 5, I bear the fruit of joy. Now, what, now listen to me. I don't bear that fruit for me to eat. No tree eats of its own fruit. You bear fruit, the fruit of joy to give it to somebody else. Listen to me. If you try to hold on to it, it will fall down onto the ground and rot and die. But you only get more when you give out what you have. I had uh, now listen uh, you you it's the fruit of joy but uh, so I bear it that's why peace is a fruit so when I come up on somebody that don't have any joy I say I don't have to go to get it I already have it uh, not because I'm the source but because I am the vine and he is the vine and I am the branches and because I'm connected to the source of joy I can give you joy Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's great. But I can, is that okay? Now, the Bible said, you, I am the vine and you are the branches. He said, if you abide in me, the seam bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Uh, listen to me now. Now, so where do I get my joy, though? I'll tell you where you get your joy. That answer is found in St. John chapter number 16, verse number 24. When Jesus said, he said, you've not asked in my name before. He said, but from now on, you're going to ask in my name. And he said, I'm going to give it to you. And then I like the last part of that verse. He said that your joy may be full. Uh, Y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, you get your joy through answered prayer. You get your joy through breakthroughs in prayer. And that's where the devil's lied to some of you. Uh, the devil's lied to you and said, you're not meant to have an answer to prayer. But I come to tell you here today, uh, you are meant to have answers to prayer. You weren't meant just to pray prayers and not get no answer. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here today, but I'm telling you, hell's having a bad day up in here right now. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, you were designed to have answers to prayer. You're standing in an answered prayer right now. Uh, I said, you're standing in an answer to prayer right now. You're standing in 50 year old prayers right now. You're standing in prayers that were 10 years old. Oh. Yeah, look at your neighbor telling you're standing in an answered prayer. You're standing in an answered prayer. You're standing in the answered prayer. You're standing in an answered prayer. You're standing in an answered prayer, in an answered prayer right now. Ah. 
some of you think your prayer's never going to get answered. But I'm going to let hell know I'm not living without answers to prayer. And I'm not going to have to beg to get the answer. Because I I am a son of God. I'm not some slave down the road. I'm not some servant down the street. I am a son of God. Let me help you with something. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, this building is a seed. Uh, Listen to me. This building is a seed. This is just the entry level. Okay. I don't think you heard what I just said, but I'll try it again. This is the entry level. You see, thy word is a lamp that's entry level. Thy word is a lamp. That's the entrance. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Ah, but a light. Ah, the lamp is the seed. But once you go through the entrance way, there is a light. Ah, yes. Listen to what I'm going to tell this church. This church, this building is a seed. This is not the fulfillment. This is the entrance way. Ah, yes. This is the entrance way. Ah, yes. I'm going to tell you there are people in this region right now. And I want to tell you there are in, re, there are people in this. Uh, is it okay if I prophesy to some dry bones in this region? Uh, I've come to open my mouth and prophesy to every dry corridor in this region. Uh, I've come to open my mouth and prophesy to every dry community. Uh, Hallelujah. Well, Brother Wade, we only have the seating capacity uh, for almost 500. Uh, But I would propose to you here today, uh, this building has the seating capacity for 3,500. Y'all ain't hear what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, This building has the seating capacity for 3,500. Because you can have, because this is not a Sunday morning only church. Uh, Y'all ain't hear what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, This is not a Sunday only church. Uh, This church, uh, this church, my brothers and sisters, uh, this church uh, is a Monday church. Uh, This is a Tuesday church. Uh, This is a Wednesday church. Church. This is a Thursday church. This is a Friday church. This ain't a one day a week church. This is where people are getting ready to transition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so what has to happen now? Because What's going to happen now is that, praise the Lord, and and I, I'm, I, I'm going to tell you something. God is looking at this church. Now, what most of us don't understand, and the pastor uh, uh, put and uh, just indicated a minute, a few minutes ago, and it was already working on me, so here I am. Well, here, I wanted you to hear me. Joy, joy comes through answered prayer. Our problem has been, sis, our problem has been, what we have been, what has happened is, you understand, my brother, when you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is a discerner. Listen to me very closely. The Holy Ghost is a discerner. Ah, listen. The Holy Ghost is a discerner. This is why I don't own everything I feel. Ah, this is why I don't own everything I feel. This is going to give some of you about a, going to give some of you a revelation right now that's going to bring deliverance to your house. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. Uh, when you have the Holy Ghost, you have the gift of 
discerning of spirits or at least the potential is there so when you have the gift of discerning of spirits it's not going to get you invited to Denny's at the church uh, it wasn't meant to be spooky uh, it's not meant to be spooky trust me uh, it's not meant to be weird uh, I was told if you have the gift of discerning of spirits uh, that you cannot you, you know people don't want to hang out with you uh, but that's not really the truth uh, uh, that's for all those weird folks that uh, and pl trust me I'm not being demeaning what I'm saying uh, that's for folks that want to act spiritual more than they are uh, yes uh, is this okay? Because we're digging up something in this region right now. Uh, now listen to me. Uh, when you operate in the gift of discerning of spirits, uh, the gift of discerning of spirits is like a radar. Uh, it can pick up things in the atmosphere. Uh, I can discern in four areas. Uh, I can discern the spirit of God. Uh, I can discern the angelic. Uh, I can discern the demonic. Uh, and I can discern human spirits. Ah, uh, yes, you can. Uh, so when you walk out of this building uh, and you start driving out of this parking lot uh, and you get off of the premises uh, and you start to, uh, and you feel like depression gets in the car with you, uh, listen to me, uh, that was not meant for you to own. You are not depressed. God is letting you pick up on uh, What's going on in this region? Oh, There are people in this region bound by depression, but it ain't mine, and I refuse to sit there and own it. Some of you need to take that stronghold and cast it down right now. You need to cast that thing down right now. No, some of you need to reach up and pull that. I can't preach that out of you. You got to cast it down. I'm going to say it again. The man of God can't preach that out of you. You can't dance that out of yourself. You've got to reach up because it's an imagination that has exalted itself against God's knowledge. Uh. And that's what's happened is that we have owned something that God intended for us to feel, but not so that we could own it. De I want you to know, ma'am, discernment is not a word of knowledge. Oh, hallelujah. See, oh, is this okay? I'm going to, how much time do I got? I, I don't want to bore y'all. Now watch what I'm going to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell this church. And I, 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 they may ask me to come back. And where's the pastor's wife? Is she here? Okay, how are we doing so far? Okay. The pastor's wife don't like you. You're never coming back. Praise the Lord. So we're doing all right right now. Now listen very closely. So it's not a word of knowledge. Discernment is not a word of knowledge. Uh, I had a friend of mine. Uh, so when you receive something that comes to you that is not out of your human spirit or does not come from you, you cannot own that. You cannot own it. Depression did not come from you. It may have come to you, but it did not come from you. That's why I'm not on board with these dummies. Oh, I better not because I'm sorry if Texas is rubbing off on me. And, but I'm going to tell you, I'm not up with these idiots that tell you to confess to a mental illness. That devil is a liar. I am not confessing to something that did not come from God. That did not come from God. You're not about to get me. Oh, it's quiet, but I'm telling you right now, you ain't about to get me to confess to something that did not come from God. And if it did not come from God, it came from somewhere else. Ah. Hallelujah. I had a man contact me some time ago. He contacted me, he was a pastor, brother, right? He contacted me some time ago. 
and I feel this whole body lifting now. I feel something shifting in this whole body. Hallelujah. And so I had a man call me on the phone and he said to me, he said, uh, Bobby, I had a, uh, a man call me to, or come up to me in the service today. And he said, the Lord said that he's going to take you early. And when he said that, I instantly got angry. And uh, y'all don't know me, but I'm going to tell you, I don't play around with stuff. And so he said, uh, the, the, he said, the Lord said he's going to take you early. Now, this is a man that's in his early 40s. He's got a beautiful family. He's got a great church. And uh, he comes, this man comes up and says, the Lord's going to take you early. Uh, and I said to the man, the pastor, uh, I got instantly angry. And I said to the pastor, the Lord did not say that. He said, he said, what? I said, the Lord did not say that. He said, what do you mean the Lord did not say that? He said, the Lord, I, I said, I said, he said, well, what did the Lord say? I said, the Lord said that you are the man for that, that region. You are the man that's going to take that city. You see, the devil has lied to some of you and told you you have gone as far as you're going. Oh, but that is a lying spirit. Some of you have been, some of you, the devil has told you that God's angry with you and he's upset at you and he's done with you. You made a mistake. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. So y'all don't mess, uh, y'all just don't mind me. I'm going to obey God. Some of y'all are here today and the devil's convinced you that God's mad at you. He's, he's got something against you as God is some kind of vindictive individual. But that's not how God operates. I got news for you. God is not angry with one person in this building right this second. You're not going through what you're going through so you can die. You're going through what you're going through so that the glory of God may be manifested. You see, this building is not about us. These anointings is not about us. The Bible said the Son of God came and manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God doesn't want this church just to be present. He wants this church to manifest. I'm going to say it again. God doesn't just want you to be present. It's not enough for you to show up. God wants you to manifest. I wish I had somebody to believe that. I'm not talking about just the preachers manifesting. I'm talking about you manifesting. I'm trying to tell you. I'm talking about you manifesting. Manifesting at Harps down there. Manifesting at Walmart down there. Somebody's got to be a Bethel around here. The gate of it. You've got to be a. This location is not just a Bethel, but I think I heard somewhere in that Bible that said, You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the house of God. You are the house of God. So that everywhere I go, heavens are open. Uh, heavens are open. Heavens are open. I think we need some Isaiah 64 prayers around here. You know what I'm talking about. Oh Lord, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. Uh, rend the heavens over Mountain Home. Rend the heavens over this county. Rend the heavens over this region. That's what we need. We need God to rend the heavens. And I'm starting to see a tear in the heavens right now. I'm starting to see something opening up over this region. 
There is a battalion of militant angels coming into this region. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. There is a battalion of militant angels coming into this region. And so I told him, I said, you see, it's funny to me, it's funny, I don't have time to go into it, but it's funny to me how that, brothers and sisters, it's funny to me how that we never ask God questions. Praise the Lord. Because we were taught, don't question God. When your Bible's full of questions. Well, praise the Lord. I told that man, I said, you're not going to die early. You're the man for that region. You're the, that ch you're the man for that church. Praise the Lord. I said, now that man was not sent from the devil. That man operates in the gift of discerning of spirits, but failed to ask the Lord for a word of knowledge concerning what he felt. So when you feel depression, that's not meant for you to say, well, that's mine. You are to ask God, where did this come from? Where did it come from? Where did it come? This is called the marks of maturity. Where I don't, where I don't walk around by my feelings all the time. I don't walk around by my feelings all the time. Well, if I just don't feel it, I don't show up. Listen to me. Uh, why don't you feel it? Well, I, last week, something came to me. Oh, listen. Something came to me. Listen, don't be talking about what came to you and owning it. The first thing the devil wants you to do is own it. Because if he gets you to entertain the feeling, then he will bring an attachment with it called an imagination. And then you will start imagining yourself. You, the, your mind will start playing tricks on you. You'll start seeing yourself in a casket. You'll... Oh, I'm tearing something down right now. You'll start... Is this okay? You'll start imagining things and you'll start all of a sudden thinking of stuff that's not even there that God didn't even say. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You'll start, the spirit of fear will come to you. Yeah. You start uh, getting attached to these things. But once you understand what you have a hold of, uh, once you start uh, understanding what you have a hold of and you start asking God questions, then you can, then God will give you the answer. And most likely is somebody standing next to you. Because you are the key to somebody's deliverance. And you can't minister to, to them. You can't minister to them if you are not acquainted with what they're dealing with. So God brings to you the feeling not so you can sit there and own it and, and cry about it. He lets you feel it because you got people coming into this church on a weekly basis with that kind of trash going on. And so when they come in contact with you, they don't want to hear, listen, they don't want to hear more of, of your sob story. They don't want to hear your, I'm not demeaning it, but they don't want to hear your sob story. They want you and something should click with you. Wait a second. That's why I've been dealing with that this week. I'm going to tell some of y'all right now. I'm going to tell you something. It, all through this region, we've got ministry and everything else battling on a daily basis with inadequacy and insecurity. I better not. I got to get up out of here. I, 
you know, I, I'm going to plow it up anyway. See, I'm going to tell you, the devil's not going to get you with Jim Beam whiskey. He knows that Jim Beam ain't going to work on you. He knows that watching a dirty movie ain't going to work. But he said, if I can get you to question what who God says you are, if I can get you to question who God says you are, then I can shut the progress down. I'm digging something else up in here right now. I said, if the, if, if the enemy can get you to question who God says you are, uh, then I can shut the whole thing down because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. You don't only have to believe in him. You have to believe in his word and you have to believe in who he says you are. Hallelujah. And so some of you in this building, most of you wrestle daily with inadequacy and insecurity. Praise the Lord. You wrestle daily with inadequacy and insecurity. And it's not the will of God. But it's mostly because we don't understand how God operates. God is not a slave master. We do not know God as Father. Oh God, help me. is this okay? I, I'm, I'm hope I'm helping somebody. And y'all just tell me when you're done, because I've lost 500 pounds. I got a lot of energy, and I ain't joking. I used to be over 600 pounds. Well, praise the Lord, and I'm not. And I got a lot of energy. You, you run out of patience long before I run out of energy. I'm going to tell you right now. Now, I'm not the Porsche, brother. I'm the, I'm the 1972 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. You know, with the 472 engine in it. Takes me a minute to get off the line, but once I do... I'm the land yacht. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so our, we, we don't see God as father. It's a foreign concept to us. And so when you don't see God as father, now I've got a, I got an 18-year-old, blonde-haired, blue-eyed bombshell at the house named Madison. And that girl can get on my nerves in three seconds. I know y'all can't relate to that, but, well, she's doing better. But she's doing better. But used to, I, I mean, it wouldn't matter what you threatened her with to clean her room. You'd almost have to wear a hazmat suit to go in there. All the parents are being quiet. You ain't going to hurt your kids' feelings. We all know it's the truth. Praise the Lord. Got you who bottles up under the bed. You know, got pudding packages everywhere. I'm like, my Lord, what's going on up in here? And, got a ha and I mean to tell you, you'd be like, I'm like, you must have been taken after your mother because that didn't come from me. Praise the Lord. I'm starting to have a lot of fun right now. And so, and uh, she's not watching, by the way. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. And uh, so, I, I mean, that girl could, I mean, used to, I go in, I'm like, my God, Madison, what's wrong? I mean, you didn't get this from me. You had to have got this from your mother because you didn't get this from me. And, uh, well, hallelujah. And uh, I didn't realize her mother was right on my trail, praise the Lord. I had to live with that, had to live that down a little bit. But when, uh, but you know, brother, there's not been, brother Logan, there's not been one single solitary time that my daughter has had to come up to me and say, dad, can I eat today? No, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. See, I'm going to tell you the reason why we don't get answers to prayers because we pray prayers that can't be answered. God, I got to go. I, 
We pray prayers that can't be answered. We pray prayers that work against our faith. Okay, are y'all ready? I'm gonna prove it to you. We pray prayers that are legal, illegal and we can't pray them because we pray prayers. We, we get bogged down with prayer. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, for just one second. The reason why we get bogged down with prayer is because prayer, if I get my joy through the discipline of prayer, listen to me very closely. Uh, if I get my joy through the discipline of prayer, it becomes form and no substance. That's religion. That's religion. I'm not coming here to punch my spiritual time clock. It, when you look at it as a slave master relationship, all you do is come for the discipline. But when you come to God as your father, I want to spend time with you. And so we pray prayers that are not legal to pray. We pray prayers that are already answered. And so that's why we get bogged down. And I'll prove to you and I'll show you just one example. Lord, be with me today. The, the Lord's like, what? Lord, be with me today. He's like, what do you mean be with you today? He said, that's illegal for you to pray because my word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And Madison has never, not one time, not one time has Madison ever had to ask me to eat. If she looks at me and says, can I eat today? I'm looking at her and saying, are you out your ever loving mind? There is nothing in this house off limits to you. When you come into daddy's house, there ain't nothing off limits to you. You're not some bum down the street. You are a son and daughter of God. And so that means everything that's in his house is in my house. If you leave here with no joy today, it's not because it's not in the father's house. It's because... You Uh, lift your hands one more time. Let's thank the Lord for this. I, I'm not going to be here much longer. Whew. So you know what I do now? I sit in the house. I sit in my house. I sit in the presence of God. And you know what I do? Now, see, it didn't matter how many times Madison didn't clean her room. I didn't tell her, you can't eat today. There's nothing in this house off limits to you. If I come to the house, Bobby, take your shoes off. If I come to the house, you say make yourself at home, but you don't really mean it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say make yourself at home. I'm not being rude. Uh, you make yourself at home as long as you stay up in here. As long as you stay up in here. You can make yourself at home right here. Keep your feet off the the, 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 uh, the end table keep your feet off the coffee table sit there with both feet on the floor but your kids can come in and they can wreck everything in the house they can spill they can spill Kool-Aid on the couch well oh god we gotta get that fixed 
You know why? Because they're yours and you're not kicking them out. If I spilled coffee on the couch, you got to go. But when Madison spills coffee on the couch, well, Madison will just clean it up. Y'all ain't hear what I'm trying to tell you. Some of you act as if you're a visitor in God's house. And God said, I know you acted up and did some dumb things, but I'm not going to kick you out. You're mine and I love you and I paid the ultimate price for you. That's why it's illegal for you not to have peace. That's why it's illegal for you not to have joy because your daddy has it and because your daddy has it he wants you to have it. Oh somebody ought to give God some praise in this house. Is this all right? We okay? It's not the will of God for this church to stay up all night and beg God for provision. That's why it's illegal to be a son and daughter of God and continue to say stuff like, I'm poor. any drinks left. Let me tell you something. I'm going to try it one more time. That's why it's illegal for you to be a son and daughter of God and confess that you're poor. See, poor is a mentality. Is this a Poor is a mentality. Now I might be broke, but I'm not poor. Because broke is a temporary status. I'm just going through broke right now. But when daddy opens up that wallet. See, there's about a $400,000 miracle hanging over this church right now. When I was in the hotel, I kept hearing 400,000, 400,000, 400,000. There is a $400,000 miracle hanging in this region right now. I, I'm not just making that up. I don't know nothing about this church or nobody in this church. But somebody's got to understand daddy has it in his house. And because daddy's got it in his house, I don't have to beg. I just receive. Because the daughter works that are coming out of the womb of this church, the daughter works that are coming out of the womb of this church have got to have finances to operate. And it's not the will of God. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you what I know, not what I think. The, 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 the finances for daughter works to operate, it's not the will of God for us to get up here and beg and beg and beg and beg. It is the will of God for us to pray the prayer and to have the prayer answered. This man of God has got more stuff to do overseas. This man of God's got more stuff to do international. And so do I. Uh, and I told the Lord the other day, Brother Morgan, I told the Lord the other day, I'm not asking people for the money. I'm not going to do it. I refuse to do it because I don't have to beg because I am a son of God. And if you, if you want me to go, you're going to have to bring the money somewhere, somehow, some way. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get out of here. But I'm introducing a paradigm into some of y'all's minds. Hallelujah. When my daughter didn't do what I wanted her to do, and an intruder was to break in my house. I wouldn't look at Madison and say, your mama gets protection, but you don't. 
that's not how I work. I may be, I may be a little let down because you didn't listen when I wanted you to. I may have to have disciplined you, but oh, I pity the fool that comes in here to try to get my mind. Y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you. Just because you made a blunder doesn't mean you ain't getting no protection. Just because you made... If you start approaching God as father, it'll change your perspective. In fact, I'm going to tell you, your father delights in your asking. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, and I'm, I'm getting ready to be done. I, I don't want to wear you all out. Hallelujah. The 472 is running out of gas. <laughs> now watch. Last year, Last year, I, I, I was sitting in my house and my wife had, my wife, I've been wanting to, I, I got an old farmhouse built in 1943. And I mean, it's an old house. And when, when the Lord gave me that house, it wasn't no Taj Mahal. And it's still, it, it, it's, it's better now, but it wasn't no, it, it's still not no, castle out there but it's my castle and I'm thankful for it and so I got it in my spirit Lord I want to my wife deserves something better and and so she had a kitchen that was 10 by 10 just an old I mean had a pretty nice size dining room and a pretty nice size living room but the, do, the kitchen was 10 by 10. I mean, you could barely turn around in there. And I said to the Lord, I said, I don't like this for my wife. I, I'm being dead serious. I said, I don't like this for my wife. I said, she deserves better than that. First of all, I want to give her better, but she's your daughter and she deserves better. Praise the Lord. Well, you may not believe that, but I do. She deserves better for just putting up with me. Praise God. She deserves better than just for just putting up with me. So watch what happens. I, I sit on the couch. I'm frustrated. I said to the Lord, I said, Father, do you have the money for this? He said, yes, I do. I said, well, then I receive it. And in four months time, God gave me $40,000. No, y'all ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you. In four months time, God gave me $40,000 to remodel that house so that my wife could have something better. You ain't sitting there telling me God don't care. Look at the building you're setting in. God didn't care about it, you'd still be next door. But God cared about it enough. Look where you're sitting. Look. No, look, look where you're sitting. Look where you're sitting. Stand to your feet. Look where you're sitting. Standing. Huh. Hallelujah. Look where you're standing. If God didn't care. I'm going to try it again. God didn't care. Look where you're standing. Because he's a good father. And nothing he does is halfway. Hallelujah. Brother, just get ready. Something's coming to you. I, I keep seeing the blessings of God coming to you. I'm talking about in a major way. I don't know why, but I just kept, my, my spirit keeps being drawn to you. And I, I feel like the Lord is getting ready to pour something out on your, out on you. 
It's going to be amazing. God's going to prove some stuff to some people in this church. I'm telling you what I know. Some of you have been on the wait and see list, but I'm telling you, you're fixing to get off the wait and see list. I said, some of you on that wait and see list, but you're about to get off of it. I tell you, God's going to give you a fast exit off the wait and see list. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise one more time. I said, let's give the Lord some praise one more time up in here. Let's give the Lord some praise one more time up in here. Oh, somebody ought to give God some praise in here. You don't have to beg to be healed. You're going to be healed because, well, because he's a good father and he's got healing and he's going to give it to you. If you need a healing in your body, lift your hands all over this house. Now, in just a moment, we're going to speak the word of faith. And when we do, we're going to begin to shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Now, we're not going to beg no more. We're not going to beg. We're not going to beg. We've been in the begging mode for a long time, but we're not going to beg no more. Because we don't have to. And because he's a good father. And he loves us. And he cares. And he wants us to be healed. And he wants us in good health. By the authority of the word of God. And by the power that is in the name Jesus of Nazareth, I exercise authority and dominion now as a son of God over the infirmity that is attacking my brother, a son of God. I bind it and I cast it out now in the name of Jesus. And I loose the working of miracles in this house right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. By the authority of the word of God, lift your hands right now. We're getting ready to shout to the Lord and we're getting ready to receive the miracle of the Lord into our body in the name of Jesus. By the authority of the word of God and by the power that is in the name Jesus of Nazareth, I exercise authority and dominion over every infirmity in this building right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it and I cast it out of your body and I loose the working of miracles into every individual in this room right now as sons and daughters of God receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus now go ahead and begin to praise the Lord go ahead and begin to praise the Lord oh. I said go ahead and praise the Lord somebody needs to get out of your seat and practice the miracle Somebody needs to get out of your seat and practice the miracle right now. Ooh. I said, get out of your seat and practice the miracle. I said, get out of your seat and practice the miracle.
royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm a child of the king, buried in his name. There is no devil that can come against me. I'm a less bought, being set free. I feel the joy of the Lord bottom pressing me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the So pardon me a moment while I have a dream.